Oh, we're cutting out all the templates. We've got Jake and Josh smashing it out. And um, yeah, so what we did is we measured the um, TP. Now that we've put the frame up, we measured the frame and all the triangles are relatively the same size. So we're rolling out uh, all of these billboards. Um, we get them from an old advertiser. He just had pallets of them that he had to give away. And then this really, really thick mesh impregnated PVC um, fabric. Uh, so yeah, we've got one template over there, roll out the next one, trace the template onto it and cut it out. Then we're going to staple them together, You. So here we have our uh, really large stapler from Officeworks, about 80 bucks. Um, and the key is it can get, um, it's got a really good handle so that you can punch through really heavy duty stuff and you can get quite deep with it as well. Um, so yeah, we've got a line of staples here. That they're, they're already done and um, we have to get, you put both white sides together of two triangles and they have to be based off uh, this map, which the first one we're doing here is um, 10 and one put together and we put um, side A and side B as well. And so we have the sides of 10B and 1A getting stapled together currently, and we'll do it in pairs. So we've got 10 and one, and then we're gonna do two and three down the center, and three and five, six and seven, eight and nine, all down the centers. Uh, and then we'll, so we'll have five groups of pairs, and <clears throat> then we will uh, put four together, so we'll do like five, six, and we'll staple seven and eight to it, so two pairs, and then do four, three, two, one, and then have just a single pair left over, and then we'll join all of those, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all together, uh, and then we'll tack the last pair on. So it's really important to have a map, uh, and that you're double and triple checking your A and B seams, um, so that you don't accidentally do the opposite seams, ultimately. Uh, and you always have to have two white sides together so the whole thing will be stapled together to have the printed side on the outside so it'll be actually inside out and then we'll um, turn the whole thing uh, through the little hole you have to kind of fold it out um, just like sewing anything really you got to sew the inside first and then uh, turn it out so yeah that's what we'll do it's worked really well in the past the staples are pretty close together um, and they've just worked really well. So we staple them and then we open up the seams and we glue them as well on the inside. And we've done duct tape as well as a third waterproofing, but I think we'll just glue it this time. So yeah, it's pretty cool. More stapling. There's um, two seams per triangle and there's 10 triangles. So it's 20 seams that we have to staple. It takes about eight minutes or maybe 10 minutes to staple one seam. And then we run a little bead of um, glue we got um, liquid nails at the moment, but we're going to be using silicon um, uh, as well, running that in the seam and then squishing it together so it'll um, stick up really well. You. So we stapled five pairs together uh, and now we're starting to put two groups of pairs together. So we're doing um, panel number one, two, and three and four, putting that all together. So we'll have four, and then we'll do another one of four, and then we'll staple them all together. Whoa. So we're at a pretty exciting part. Uh, we've just turned the um, hat inside itself because we made it um, inside out so that we could staple the seams, just like sewing a shirt or whatever. And uh, the way that we had to do it, we had to push the small um, end of it through the large open end. So we kind of were clambering around in there and pushing and pulling and it slowly came out and then folded itself out the right way. So now we're attaching some ropes to the um, a few parts of it. So we can um, chuck a few ropes over, begin pulling it up and uh, Josh will get up the ladder as well and um, be able to help it all over. It's definitely very awkward and a little bit slow, but um, yeah, it'll get up there and it'll be sweet. Woo! So we've um, attached two ropes to two of the corners and um, chucking them up to Josh and he's going to slowly tug it up and then we're going to once it gets over the top, we're going to pull it from the other side down. We did it! We did do it. It's up! Yeah! Went really well. Uh, probably only took a couple minutes. 
under five minutes, which is great. And all the seams are lining up really well. And down here on the edge, we've got deliberately the edging of the billboard because um, it's double reinforced with a rope and um, some more fiberglass mesh stuff. So um, yeah, we've got that down the bottom to make a really nice clean edge and then we're gonna um, peg down to the ground just like a normal, normal tent. But it's really good to be able to have a bit of airflow because uh, we're gonna have internal linings of blankets. So a bit of airflow in between the two um, blankets and the, um, and the outer skin. So yeah, just super, super happy with it. Looks great. All of our seams are holding up well. Um, we've got glue and the staples. So yeah, it's looking really great. <laughs> Whee! We're inside of the teepee! <laughs> <laughs> Looks awesome. Here's the top. Looking pretty schmicko. Got to flash that in some way. Probably going to duct tape it a lot and then um, make a nice flashing for it. But yeah, it's looking great. It's a me. Mario. Next step is to start getting some soil in here for the earthen floor. We've got our waterproofing down. Um, yeah, so we'll fill probably 50 mil with um, uh, with just uh, dry earth, and then we're going to do a wet earthen layer on top. So yeah, got a lovely sunflower here. This one's for you, Josie. Cutting the doorway. <laughs> Marked it out with an old old lid. Now we're going to cut it out, and then we're going to get all this soil and start packing it in as a dry pack for the earthen floor. Check us out, we're up at the bloody top of a teepee, man. So this has worked out really, really well. There's always a little bit of anxiety that like the measurements aren't gonna be bang on and this has worked out really well. We're gonna be able to fold this really easily and then um, probably gonna duct tape. That's probably gonna be the most successful heavy duty duct tape that on first and then make a nice flashing that'll cover this and um, uh, obviously if I was just to leave this like this this would be a big pool area for water and then that would probably get through the seam eventually or come through this um, where it meets the steel the hardest part is always between two dissimilar materials so this um, billboard is pretty dissimilar to the steel so making sure that's really watertight and really solid is very important so yeah this is absolutely amazing I'm quite afraid of heights uh, which is a strange industry to be in, <laughs> building really tall things, but it feels really good. It's amazing how strong the 10-sided um, Decagon pyramid is. It's really, really sturdy, and yeah, we've bolted it on. Uh, there's bolts going through here, they're really, really tight, and yeah, it's just feeling really good. Check us out, look at our beautiful farm. Pretty cool. So up to a really fun and interesting part where this gets a uh, very natural building, uh, which is awesome. We're gonna start doing the floor, hopefully um, start laying the floor tomorrow. So we've got a really large pile of um, soil that we dug from another project where we had to dig a really big hole. And um, it's ultimately uh, this stuff here. So um, because I can squeeze it together and throw it up, and it stays together means that there's at least some clay in there um, on closer inspection and because I've been doing this for a long time um, I know that there's actually quite a bit in there you can um, get it wet roll it into a bit of a sausage and then try and bend it and see how much you can curve it before it starts to split the more you can curve it the more clay there is in it so um, I know that there's like at least 50 percent clay in here um, so we filtered out a lot of the large rocks and we have this trailer load behind us here um, and then I just went to the quarry right next door and got about a ton of washed sand 
and as a comparison, because it's washed sand, it means it has no clay in it. I'm gonna squeeze this together, it's nice and damp, and it completely falls apart. So there's um, pretty much no clay in this stuff. Uh, it's been actually washed out with water. Um, so we've got 100% coarse sand and um, something that's at least 50%, 50, 60, maybe even 70% clay over here. So down here, I've just done a few um, simple quick tests in my bucket. I used, uh, this is my measuring, um, my ratio maker. Uh, and we started with one part washed sand to one part clay soil, um, which is this one here, which uh, worked fine. Um, we then did one washed sand to, to uh, sorry, uh, one clay to two washed sand um, on here, and then we went all the way up to one part clay to three parts sand. And um, I had a feel of them. I want to make it as sandy as possible because um, the sand is what gives it a lot of structure and a lot of strength and because it's going to be a floor um, I'd really like that to have as much structural integrity to it as possible so um, we're also going to be adding a bit of straw um, but then on the flip side you don't want to have too little clay that it becomes sandy and dusty uh, when it's um, when it's all dried and you don't want to be able to scrape it away with your fingernail so without going too much into it, um, I'm really happy with a one to two and a half, so one part clay soil to two and a half sand. I'm really happy with that mix and that's what we're going to go for with some um, straw in there as well which we'll decide tomorrow. Recently bought a brand new cement mixer which I'm really pumped to be using and uh, yeah, so we're going to give it a shot tomorrow. And uh, we understand that there's going to be some settling because we didn't take away the um, grass from underneath it was just something I didn't think to do and then we put the um, waterproofer on top so uh, it's gonna have some settling but we've already packed it out with a dry pack that's been um, settling for over a week close to two weeks so um, hopefully that's taken out um, a bit of the settling and a little bit of the cushion um, but yeah we're just gonna have to go for it it's gonna be one of those fun experiments so we know that it's gonna probably crack a bit because it's gonna settle so we're not putting any stabilizer in it so that we can come back once it cracks and fill just wet the cracks and fill with um, a clay slip and just uh, fix them up so yeah it's gonna be all cool you go team so we're about to lay the floor we got Jake and Josh in deep the in masters the in the flesh we got a massive um, track the bar bar barrow bucket of oh, beautiful cob that we mixed over there in the new mixer and uh, we've lifted up the skirt of the uh, TP so we get good ventilation and so we can also get a screed all the way through so we can um, screed like you would just in concrete we're gonna start at the back and go all the way to the front Yee we stomped around on this, had a bit of a dance, got it nice and compacted, feeling good about it. It's gonna be sweet, man. Yeah. center point where we've uh, raised that center point to the same height as the outer bits of timber um, so that we can spin around with the screed like a clock uh, and just do um, every tenth section by section and it's working really well 
Um, yeah, it's drying off already over there. It's getting sucked into the subfloor, which is quite good. And once we close the skirt, because uh, we'll probably get a bit of rain soon, uh, once we close it all off, it'll really, it won't have any direct sunlight going on it, so it'll, um, I think and I hope, uh, dry really evenly and slowly. Um, so yeah, really pumped on it. Incredibly happy. It's so good to be in the mud again.